Well, hey, your friends, it's Raj back with you again today. There's a polar vortex headed our way. That sounds like a great time to stay inside and review this right here. Cozart's, I don't know what the name is, Jaguar Jazzmaster hybrid copy. Let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that mess and I'll be able to do more videos and more guitars and other stuff. So full disclosure here, Reed and Sons sent me this guitar to review, but I am not beholden to any man or company. So uh, this review, all the content that's in this review, anything I say, these are my opinions, my opinions alone. They haven't been swayed by uh, Reed and Sons or any other man or entity. The only condition of them sending me this guitar was that I would review it, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. That came about because of my review of their King brand, which is an offshoot of Cozart, Mahogany Offset Telecaster with a P90. So you can check that out if you haven't. I really like that guitar. I think it's a really fun uh, way to get into that exact form factor at a very good price, and it's all mahogany, which is really cool. This guitar, the body shape is exactly the same, but that's about where the similarities end. Really close to a Jazzmaster, a little, a little different, but uh, as I said too many times in that review, handsome. So let me give you a general overview of this guitar because A, there's no name, and that was the case on the other guitar as well. There's no name, there's no serial number, so uh, there's no specific identifier. When you search for this guitar on eBay, you're gonna be searching for uh, Cozart, Jaguar copy. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called last time I looked. But that's a bit of a misnomer because it is a normal Fender 25 and a half inch scale, which a Jaguar is not. So if you're looking for a Jag and you want it to feel just like a Jag, first of all, scale's wrong. Second of all, if you're looking for a direct comparison, this is not the channel. I don't have a Jag. I've never had a Jag. I've very infrequently played Jaguar. So I'm not a Jaguar expert by any stretch of the imagination. However, this guitar uh, is a little bit more at my wheelhouse because of the 25 and a half inch scale and more normal, shall we say, Fender uh, sizes and appointments and things like that. The possibility of upgrading uh, components and, and parts and whatnot, if, if nothing else is a little cheaper and easier uh, in terms of just finding those parts. If you've ever searched for Jaguar replacement parts, which we'll get into in a little bit, they're uh, hard to find and not cheap. So back to it. So yes, we have a 25 and a half inch scale, uh, a Jazzmaster-ish body. And then beyond that, you get into what looks like a Jag. But if you, if you look closer, look a little closer, you'll notice that there aren't two volume wheels here. There are two more switches. So you have the three switches that you'd normally see on a Jag. And you have... The other switch that you normally see on a Jag, and you have two more switches that you wouldn't see on a Jag, and that makes for a lot of combinations of switches. My guess is the folks that made this guitar didn't really want to go through the trouble of putting in uh, the full rhythm circuit and lead circuit. I'm going to be honest, that's way too many combinations to map down. Several of the combinations are the same, depending on what you do. So what I did literally was I literally mapped out uh, my six or so favorite combinations, the settings that I think I would find on uh, a Jag. 
So basically pickups by themselves, pickups together, pickups together, but out of phase, those kind of things. I wrote them down and probably I'll never memorize them, but we'll get into that later. Let's go from the headstock down, shall we? So starting with the headstock, we've got kind of a strat shape. If you were a more industrious person than I, you could probably shave off a little of this and get it to a, a, a more of a fender look if you were so inclined. But you know, it's not terrible. It looks a little bit goofy, uh, but kind of in the way that a K or an old Sears and Roebuck look goofy, which is to say, I kind of like it. It kind of it kind of makes me feel like I'm uh, picking up a, a pawn shop guitar, which I really like. I would think that you guys might know that by now if you watch the channel. These tuners uh, look the exact same as the tuners that were on the King, but these aren't quite uh, as impressive to me. I, I was pretty impressed with those tuners. Maybe I just got the luck of the draw on those specific ones, but these are okay. They're budget, unbranded tuners, but they seem to do the trick. They are probably about 1 to 14 or so, if I was guessing. So we have two string trees on here, and they're placed very well. The The break angle of the strings is uh, is great and pretty consistent. The nut was cut pretty well. This guitar came with nines, I believe. I put tens, my usual XLs, for testing on this guitar. I haven't made any other changes to the guitar whatsoever. The, the nut accommodated the tens pretty well. Probably could use a little bit of filing, but even as is, it's playable. Working our way down to the fretboard, uh, Reed & Sons doesn't specify what this is, I don't believe. So it could be rosewood. If it's rosewood, it's really dark and probably stained or otherwise treated, and it may not be a rosewood, but regardless, it's uh, it's finished nicely. It looks great against the body and the headstock in terms of uh, just the finish, and, uh, you know, does the trick. There's nothing weird about it, but it is a little bit hard to see the grain, so if that's something that concerns you, just be aware. So on to the frets. The first thing I'll say is the fret ends are dressed exactly like the King, which I'm super impressed by. I love the fact that they do like a 45 degree angle, if I was guessing, on the fret ends perfectly dressed down the edge and just really comfortable to play because of that. So kudos to Cozart slash King slash whoever designed that and is doing that. I wish all budget manufacturers would start doing that. So onto the frets themselves, there's a few high spots, but nothing crazy, nothing completely choking out the guitar and uh, just out of the box after a little bit of a tune and intonation and... Um, truss rod adjustment. Every note played, but there are a couple of slightly high spots that at some point will need to be addressed. I will try to get a measurement on the thickness of the neck, but this is uh, definitely quite a bit thicker than the King. Uh, for my personal preference, I like that. I actually find this neck to be super comfortable. I would say that it at very least is a fat C with, with fat shoulders and maybe, maybe edging up on a D. I can't say with 100% certainty, but I'm going to guess maple on the neck. Maybe some of you woodworking types can look at that grain and tell me definitively if that's maple. From the looks of it, it's a one piece uh, before they tacked on the fretboard. Really, uh, really like playing it. For my uh, hand shape and what I'm used to, I really think it's a comfortable neck. Uh, if you like slightly thicker necks, then I think that you'd, uh, you'd dig this. So then we're moving down to the body. The joint is nice and tight, no weirdnesses. Uh, body and neck fit together very well, no gaps, no spaces. Again, the body is the same shape as the king, so uh, whether you like it or hate it, it's the same. Uh, it's pretty close to a jazz master. It's definitely offset, and it's really balanced to play sitting down, so uh, very cool on that front. Before we get into the pickups and electronics, let me go down to the bridge. Two pneumatic style bridge and a tremolo system that they've horked from Jazzmaster slash Jag, and it does a great job. I actually opened this up. It looks like it's built pretty well, and uh, a little plumber's tape on the whammy bar seems to tighten it up enough to use it. That's the same exact experience I had on my road-worn uh, Jazzmaster, so I will give them full points. One thing that I'll notice that the saddles on this tunematic don't have springs. There's no sort of retention bar and there aren't springs on the individual saddles. So that means as you're insinating, you really need to push or pull those saddles to make sure there are no rattles. I'm a poet. That's a little bit of a drag and probably one of the things that I would replace if I was upgrading this guitar. Another thing that's a little bit of a drag if you're planning on getting this guitar to do upgrades is that the pick guard and the control plates, at least these two control plates I should say, are not standard fender size. They're just a little different in the way that this comes down and this comes up. And what that means is probably, and I'm just gonna say probably in big caveat right there because I don't know 100%, that you could replace the pick guard and control panels with fender 
or whatever third party you wanted to replace them with, but you'd have to replace all of them. And I priced this out and it's not cheap. It's so not cheap, as a matter of fact, that I don't think I'm gonna do it. It's worth noting that these chrome control plates are actually plastic with a chrome mirrored backing on them. So a uh, couple points off for that, but you know they gotta shave those costs down wherever they can. So far, the switches are operational. I think that if I was playing this guitar out, if it was gonna become my main guitar, I'd probably go through and replace those switches, which is not too terribly expensive to do. But before you do that, before I spend the money on switches, let me get into that whole thing a little bit. Let's get weird. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna say something that should be obvious. It's a budget guitar. You're not gonna find the cream of the crop hand-wound pickups and pushback wire and all that good stuff inside. They're gonna be budget components, budget pickups, budget wire, budget everything, and that's what it is. I'll show some pics of the inside. But I'll say that without question, this guitar will find its way into productions for me because it does have some tonal qualities that just nothing else that I have has. So I did a, a quick measure. I didn't take uh, the pickups out and off, but uh, just doing a quick measure um, through the electronics. The neck pickup is reading around 3.2K, and this is even lower, just below 3K, which seems incredibly low and is incredibly low compared to, you know, strap pickups being 5K and and uh, humbuckers maybe, you know, being up above 10K in some cases. And if you would have told me that before I plugged it in and played it, I would have been like, oh, that's broken, that's useless. But, you know, it's not. And I don't know if it's just that that imparts this different tonal quality or if it's just a sum of everything it's going through, every switch, every cable, every weirdness that's inside this guitar. Um, but it's making me think twice about replacing what's here because it does have a unique character. So let's, let's start off in the neck position. <laughs> So the amps I'm using is a Fender uh, Deluxe from UA, and you know this is way higher of a setting than I would have typically put it on for a clean sound for a Strat or Tele, and certainly for anything with a humbucker in it. But it's a cool texture, it's a cool tone, and again, just a different than my other single coil sounds. So. Uh, I find it cool. I'll, I'll say that it's kind of noisy. N there's nothing shielded about this at all. There is a ground cable running up um, to the bridge, but uh, if you take your hands off to do a whammy, you can hear some weird things in there. A little clickety click, click, click. So uh, definitely one area that you could update this guitar is just some some shielding, just a lot of uh, a lot of shielding. There's nothing in there whatsoever. So that would be one area that you could definitely improve the guitar uh, just for a little bit of change. Let's switch over to the bridge pickup. <laughs> So I think it's pretty cool. It's definitely got some um, some quack, maybe a little bit more quack than a strat pickup in that uh, in that bridge position, and a different quack than a than a tele gets. It's just kind of a cool, vintagey, weird sound that uh, I can definitely hear myself using somewhere. So very cool. So let's uh, switch to both pickups uh, in phase or or reverse wound or I, I don't I don't really know I don't know the normal the normal the most normal sounding both pickup position that I could find <laughs> So pretty cool. Uh, I wouldn't say anything special. That probably wouldn't be the position I'd go to uh, for this guitar. I think that Strats in that fourth position and uh, Tellys with both pickups probably hold more for that type of sound than this guitar, but not bad, you know? Kind of a strummy sound, just like you'd have in those uh, in those other positions. So. so let's get a little weird now. So 
uh, both pickups, but out of phase. Let's check that out. So weird, cool, and something that I'm not going to get on any of my other guitars. So we'll count that as a uh, as a win. Those are the four positions, I guess, that I would find most useful on this guitar. Um, there may be some others. It's so hard to tell. Uh, and with 64 combinations, I'm just not going to go through all of them. But anyway, maybe you'll find something new and unique. Uh, I think it's cool. It, it, it kind of begs the question of whether I'll replace uh, these pickups or any of the electronics or not. I don't know. It's, it's a little weird for me, and this is kind of my last thought, is that without being plugged in, just playing acoustically, the guitar has a very different character to me than once I hear its pickups. And I don't know exactly uh, what that will hold for the future, whether or not I will try to make it feel more like it does Unplugged, which is this very shallow break angle uh, with the kind of more typical Jazzmaster um, trim. And between the resonating of those strings and just the slinky... It definitely holds a place that's very different than anything I own, even my Jazzmaster. I don't exactly know why... Uh, when I get that guitar back here sometime later this month, maybe I'll uh, do some comparisons. But So what I might just do is upgrade the wiring that's inside here and see what kind of difference that makes. But uh, out of the box for you know less than $200, I think it's a very unique voice uh, to add to my arsenal. Uh, while it might not be a Jag, it is, a, it is unique, and that might be enough um, to, uh, to merit it for your arsenal. It wouldn't be my recommendation for the only guitar you own, the only electric you own. Um, that's that you know that would be a, a a bit of a strange guitar as your only electric, I think. But hey, maybe strange is your cup of tea, and that's what you need uh, for your thing. So I'll leave it at that. And at some point in the future, I'll uh, I'll report back on what I've done to this thing, and uh, you know how I've how I've changed it to. Uh, to be more useful in, in my situation, but I do think I'm going to hang on to it. I, I think it's cool and, uh, and weird. And, and I do think it's really comfortable to play just a really comfortable neck for me. And, uh, you know, a few of the usual things, uh, upgrading the tuners and the nut and, uh, the bridge, those three things would make it even more so and probably be worth the, uh, you know, 50 or so bucks to, uh, to put this, put this guitar in the 250 range. So I'll report back once uh, I do some of those things, but until then, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Mm.